I'm here with Dr. Mark Rothenberg, and we're going to talk a little bit about what's up and coming in the forecast on the clinical world for eosinophilic gastrointestinal disorders. Um, one of the questions we got today was about scope alternatives. So what is the most likely alternative to come in the foreseeable future for scopes for biopsy? Alternatives are in various regions, such as transnasal and via the tube, but no alternative has caught on nationally. This is a good question. It's, it's uh, how do we develop a less and hopefully no, ultimately a non-invasive uh, monitoring system for esophagitis. And uh, certainly um, there are some techniques and, and procedures that are in the development. Um, they haven't, as you said, caught on in terms of uh, being widely used. However, they show great promise. That includes both the transnasal endoscopy, the eosinophil uh, string test, and the eosinophil uh, cyto sponge. These are all ways um, that are some invasive, certainly from the patient point of view, um, but they are less invasive in, in a standard endoscopy, particularly in pediatrics, which requires uh, um, substantial anesthesia. There are uh, also a number of different um, circulating biomarkers and oral biomarkers that are being used, which would certainly be a lot less invasive than the other more um, um, gross procedures involving uh, endoscopy. The next question is about sequencing. Do you anticipate that whole exome sequencing will be an important route to identifying which subtype a patient has and then to map out treatment? Whole exome sequencing in the case of EOE is really a uh, research uh, approach to understand the, the disease. We have done now exome sequencing on hundreds of uh, patients with EOE and um, we have use that to uncover different mechanisms and pathways involved. On the single uh, patient level, the, the whole exome sequencing is not yet uh, clinically useful, and that's because EOE is a very complex trait. And we know from our work in genetics that the uh, DNA, inherit heritable DNA, uh, the sequence of the DNA, is not uh, the primary driver of the disease. Um, for example, uh, even twins that are identical only have a 40% concordance indicating that genetics is important, but the environment plays a role as well. So we need to uh, interpret whole exome sequence data very uh, cautiously, and, um, and, and it's really a research tool at this point um, before we can use it clinically. I am not uh, highly, um, I'm not anticipating in the next couple of years uh, sequencing at that level to be uh, used clinically because of the complexity behind the disease. It's quite different than cancer and uh, Mendelian diseases where uh, single genetic changes can, can have very high likelihood of uh, causing different specific problems. The next question is about biologics. How do you see biologics, especially bupilumab, changing how we manage eosinophilic esophagitis? Could we potentially use it as a first one? Biologics are um, extraordinarily um, interesting and promising, and I uh, am uh, very hopeful that they're going to transform the treatment of eosinophilic esophagitis and related diseases. We now have uh, at our fingertips, really, um, abilities to manipulate in patients in a safe way the particular pathways that are involved in, in the orchestration and, 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 and the um, effector phase, which is the um, steps involved in propagation of the eosinophilic esophagitis. And um, I anticipate when these medications are uh, definitively proven and available based on approval by regulatory agencies, that they will be um, routinely used to manage the patients. I'm also uh, not only anticipating usage, but I'm anticipating that they will uh, transform treatment because we will be truly blocking in a specific manner the uh, basic elements of the disease. And uh, it's hopeful that these will also allow patients to live a higher quality of life, particularly by advancement of diet and improvement of their symptoms, um, which are sometimes currently refractory to therapy, and also some of the therapies certainly are, um, are limited by their um, ease of administration and their side effects. Last question for our treatment forecast section is about future treatment. What do you see as the most promising emerging treatment, Sphinx 7 related, A1AT or something else? Does the answer to this question differ by subtype? 
Will the ideal therapies be combination ones or targeted with some more precision medicine diagnostics in the future? Great question. And I can say, you know, that, that there's one treatment that's going to be the blockbuster because there's probably 10 treatments now that we could say look extraordinarily promising. And that should be very encouraging. Um, and um, and um, to, to the patients suffering from these diseases and their families. There's a number of different pathways um, that are, are now being uncovered that we believe are amenable to um, pharmacological um, manipulation and also um, being able to be used to um, truly uh, reverse and, and hopefully cure the disease. It does include uh, the, the compounds uh, mentioned in those particular examples, the Sphinx 7 and the A1AT, we're looking at some form of what we call protein replacement therapy. In the case, and we also have other um, biologics that are going to be antibody based that will block uh, specific uh, pathways. I'm very excited also about um, small molecule inhibitors, particularly uh, ones that are now being developed for other allergic diseases, but also the, the usage of medications that are currently available but that may have some side effects, but reformulating them so that they don't have systemic uh, absorption, particularly delivering to the esophagus. And examples of that might even be usage of um, some of the uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors that are now used as magic bullet therapy for cancer. These are fairly well tolerated compared to chemotherapy. They're very effective, but they do have some mild to moderate side effects. That's following systemic absorption. One of our major research projects is to topically deliver these to the esophagus and um, as a result, as we see with the usage of topical proven corticoids, that the side effects could be greatly reduced, especially if we're just seeing local um, absorption and not systemic um, absorption, and hence less side effects. So the pipeline of uh, the therapy is, um, is um, substantial, and, um, and it, it, it's, it, I'm very hopeful that it's uh, truly going to be uh, transformative for the patients.